They deceive the minds of naive people. Smooth talk and flattery. And it's for the flatterer's advantage. Jude 1.16, these men are grumblers, grumblers and fault finders. See, it's not gonna, you can't be authentically a grumbler and fault finder. They follow their own evil desires. They boast about themselves and flatter others for their own advantage. It's not just a heart issue. It's not just a life issue. It's a full surrender issue because God is authentic. God is holy. God is righteous. God is blameless. God is not a flatterer. Psalm 31, 5, we can use authentic and substitute the word true. David refers to the God of truth. Jesus, full of grace and truth, John 1, 14 and 1, 17. Jesus says, then you will know the truth when you come to me, and the truth shall set you free. I am the truth, Jesus said. Jesus referred to the Holy Spirit and called him the spirit of truth. It's very reflective of who God is in his heart. But Satan is a flatterer. God is authentic and holy. Satan is unholy. God is authentic and righteous. Satan is unrighteous. God is authentic and blameless, trustworthy. Satan is full of blame. And he's, a, he's an accuser. Revelation 12.10, Satan is an accuser. And Jesus calls him in John 8.44, the father of lies. The father of lies. So it's a full surrender issue. Who, to whom am I fully surrendering? Really? And so for you in 2003, as you look back, what were my words like? Did I flatter? Eight times out of ten, two times out of ten, at home, at work, with friends? What did I do? And just pick that X, wherever it is, 2003. Based on something that was said to me after first service, I want you to realize, you know, I'm a complimenter. Uh, I, and so is somebody else who came up and talked to me. I like to tell people about the genuine, heartfelt, good things I see in them that are from my heart. That's not flattery. That's authenticity because it's in my heart. I have, I have an appreciation for the grace God has done in me and for what he's done in them, and I want to communicate it. It's expressing love. Flattery would be for your own benefit. How do you know when you're flattering? And say, well, you're doing it for your own benefit. You want to move up a corporate ladder. You want to, you know... Um, improve, uh, I want to think of a good, healthy way to say this, taking advantage of your wife, guys. So it's that kind of a thing. Is it for their benefit in their relationship with God, or is it for mine? Well, a fully surrendered leader embraces not only gentleness, but avoids positional authority abuse. This is leadership by permission. A fully surrendered leader does not only embrace generosity, but avoids greed. A fully surrendered leader not only embraces authenticity, holy, righteous, blameless, and avoids flattery. Fourth and final thing, and I think Paul's worked his way back to this as the core idea. Kelly talked about a fully surrendered leader avoids deceit and embraces integrity. Very interesting if you look in a dictionary on what integrity means. Integrity means complete. It's all this work about being complete. Wholeness. Entireness. Unbroken state. In Hebrew, the word is tamam. T-A-M-A-M. And that's what it means. Complete. He who began a good work in you will complete it. In Christ, I am complete. Outside of Christ, I am incomplete. Trickery in the NIV or deceit in the NASB is dolos, D-O-L-O-S, which originally referred to catching fish with bait. I'm going to bait you, and then inside every bait we know is a hook. So I'm disguising the hook, and that is what trickery or deceit, dolos, is. A father, and, and, and Paul uses a father as the description of what this is like. And a lot of us, um, many of us have had poor relationships with fathers, and so this is tough for us. But he uses it as a very good thing because this is what it was designed to be. A father in the Greco-Roman world was normally responsible for the education and the training of his children. And Paul's communicating that that's all I'm trying to do with you because I love you like a father. And many of the families, we know this by John 9.22 and 12.42, they were getting booted out of the synagogues if they were Jewish and they believed in Jesus. They were, they were losing everything. And they found family in Christ. They found family in a brother and sister in a fully surrendered relationship with Christ. And you know what? I, I love my family. I have good relationships with my family. But I have found relationships that are so deep 
to other fully surrendered believers that are way beyond what just said, what a biological family in and of itself can, can uh, oftentimes give. Powerful on the family picture here. Community in Christ. So a father with integrity, we see is three things. He's encouraging. Parakaleo. This is, uh, we're in verses 11 and 12. For you know that we dealt with each of you as a father deals with his own children, encouraging, comforting, and urging you to live lives worthy of God who calls you into his kingdom and glory. Worthy of God who calls you into his kingdom and glory. Parakaleo, encouraging. It's exhorting in the NASB. It means it's, it was used in official letters when kings wanted to not be heavy-handed, when they wanted to be soft. And the readers know this. When they wanted to express a more friendly, less heavy-handed tone, leadership by permission, not abuse of positional authority, they use that word for encourage. Isn't that interesting? Do not be afraid or do not be discouraged, but encourage. The Bible talks again and again, do not be discouraged. In Joshua 1.9, it says, do not be afraid, do not be discouraged. The Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. You don't need to be discouraged. Comforting or encouraging in the NASB is among uh, or beside, con- coming alongside, speaking consolingly. It's words of comfort. Urging. He takes as the word witness. He's just said you are witnesses, and he used it again. It's kind of a play on words. Urge you. I urge you with my life. It's the cognate verb of witness. I urge you. I martyr you with my life. Sincerely connected to them and to God. Really kind of an interesting concept here on that. Sincere. It's not just a heart issue. It's not just a life issue. It's a full surrender issue. God is full of integrity. God is complete in and of himself. God is sovereign, theologians say. First Chronicles 29, 17. I know, my God, that you test the heart and are pleased with integrity. And listen, complete. Uh, David writes, and give my son Solomon the wholehearted devotion, the complete devotion, the full surrender. Leviticus 11.44, as I mentioned, God says, be holy because I am holy. Be complete because I am complete, and you're only going to be incomplete with me. Jesus is called a man of integrity. God, as the Bible says in Psalm 68.5, is a father to the fatherless, a defender of widows. God is in his holy dwelling, but Satan, contrasted, is a deceiver. Deceit, Flattery, greed, abuse of positional authority, all tools of a defeated being. All tools of a defeated being. If I buy into this, I'm actually buying into something that's a a defeated being's tools. So what about you? 2003, 2004. Look at it this way. How many times, put the X on there, out of every 10 times of encounters with people, of life with others, how many times out of 10 am I incomplete in my responses? This is so dangerous. I asked uh, an attorney once, I said, is it like this? Do you have anybody coming in and telling you I got all these problems and it came from a guy that did this? He took me aside and he said, you know what? Over the next 10 years, I'm taking everything from you. And here's, plan- here's step one. Here's step two. And he goes down to step 10. And here's exactly what I'm going to do. He, s- he said, no. It's always based on this. So deceit. It's the way a man told me out in Hershey, Pennsylvania, standing in a parking lot full of thousands of collector cars. He was uh, older and astute in the ways of the East. And he says, Mitchell, it's just like my grandmother always says. You never met a con man you didn't like. Deceit is so dangerous. Deceit is of the devil. Satan is a deceiver. Revelation 20.10, And the devil who deceived them was thrown into the lake of burning sulfur. Paul said to the sorcerer, You are a child of the devil and an enemy of everything that is right. You are full of all kinds of deceit and trickery. Acts 13.10. 